All right, in this video, we'll just take a look at graphing acceleration and speed when we're given a velocity graph. This is not a realistic velocity graph because you've got corners there. Velocity in the real world is usually a differentiable function. But as an exercise, this will be important. So it says graph the acceleration below rather than to the right. I wanted to put speed to the right, so that's why I'm just going to label that for us to remember. So on the right, we're going to graph speed. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. So I'm just going to note speed is going to be the absolute value of velocity. We'll graph that in a minute. Let's graph acceleration. The acceleration graph is going to represent the slopes of the velocity graph because the acceleration is the derivative of velocity. So what we want to know about this graph above is, is the slopes on the given intervals. So for instance, on the interval um, 0 to 1, we see that the slope is, I might even indicate this all just at once to, to get all the work done now. The slope on this little interval is um, clearly equal to 3. And then on the interval from 1 to 3, the slope is negative 3. Then the slope is 0. Then from 6 to 8, the slope is 3 again. And then from 8 to 10, the slope is negative 3 over 2. Note that the function is not differentiable in these, at these corners, so we're going to have to indicate that when we graph the derivative here. In other words, our acceleration graph. So it'll look a little weird, but it's a good exercise. So we're going to graph a slope of 3, negative 3, and 0. So from 0 to 1, my slope is 3. And I'm going to put an open circle there because it's not differentiable. And then on the next interval, it's from 1 to 3. It's negative 3. And then from 3 to 6, it's 0. And then from 6 to 8, it's 3 again. And then finally, from 8 to 10, it's negative 1 and a half. So it's kind of a strange looking acceleration graph. It's not anything you'd see in the real world, but it's a good exercise. And again, those open circles are important because the derivative doesn't exist at these corners, which means the derivative graph can't have values at those places. And that's why we had these open circles here. It says to graph the speed above. So in graphing the speed, we're graphing the absolute value of the velocity graph, which means to reflect everything over the x-axis. So much of it will stay the same. From 1 to 2, I'm just going to copy down exactly what I see here. So I've got a straight line there. Right? And then from 7 to 10 also, it's going to look exactly the same. So we have this value here. Okay, those parts are already positive. And then we've got to reflect up that bottom part, that trapezoid part. So um, it's going to look like this. So there's our speed graph. Um, again, it, we're just reflecting the velocity function above uh, over the x-axis. When does the object, object reverse direction? Anytime the velocity changes sign. So that clearly happens at time 2 and at time 7. So at time 2 and time 7. There aren't any units on this, uh, this graph. It's just kind of a generic exercise. When is, the, uh, when is the object moving at a constant speed? It's moving at a constant speed whenever the speed function is constant, which is here. Also, when the velocity function is constant, and that's also when your acceleration is zero. So however you think about it, it's uh, moving at a constant speed on the intervals from three to six.
trying to do my set theory notation there. There, on the interval three to six, it's moving at a constant speed. So there is an exercise in graphing acceleration and speed from a velocity graph.